Hi, I'm Courtney. Welcome to our garden, where today I'm going to show you one way to fill a raised bed for successful harvest. This is a four by eight raised bed. Actually, it's a little bit shy of four by eight and it's 17 inches deep. And I lined the bottom with cardboard, just old cardboard boxes that I had. And I removed all of the tape and there were staples in one of them that I removed. And I always try to get cardboard that has the least amount of ink possible on it, even though I think most ink used on cardboard nowadays is water soluble and non-toxic. Um, I just still feel better using cardboard with the least amount of ink possible. So I used the cardboard, flattened out the boxes, and I lined the bottom of this bed with the cardboard. That kind of, it just provides it with a nice lining on the bottom that will help smother the weeds that are under there right now. Eventually the cardboard is going to decompose and add to the soil. The next thing we're going to line this bed with is some old logs and branches. Let's go get some of those now. This is a really old tree on our property and whenever it's windy branches have been falling on the ground and these are perfect because they've been sitting here for a while. You can see that they're already starting to decompose. These are the perfect logs to put in the bottom of your garden bed because the decomposition has already begun and plant roots are going to start actually growing into these logs going to take a long time for them to decompose in the garden bed, but when they do, it's going to add to the soil. So I'm just going to fill the wheelbarrow up with these logs and we're going to line our garden bed with these. Yeah, just don't step on a fire ant mound in the process. <laughs> Look at that, it's great. Perfect. Since this bed is 17 inches deep, I'm just going to make one layer of logs on the bottom. And you just want to make sure that you have at least 12 inches of good soil on top. These 4 by 8 raised beds, when we first started them, we put gravel in the bottom to help with drainage but they're only 12 inches deep. This raised bed is 17 inches deep, so we've got some more space to put some logs in the bottom to help with drainage, but it's really gonna contribute to healthy soil more than gravel would. All right, almost done. I just gathered some more brush and things to put in the bottom. So you can line it with sticks, old sticks and logs and whatever you have, but as long as it's not green stuff, if it's dry, dead, brittle stuff, you're good to go. Looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna start adding soil. The soil I'm gonna use comes from a local business and I've been using it for the past 10 years and it's a mixture of topsoil and mushroom compost. My advice if you're sourcing soil would be to, if possible, look for a local business that sells it and then you know you can find out exactly where it comes from. You can make sure that it's totally chemical free. You're just gonna wanna make sure that it doesn't have any persistent chemicals in it like herbicides and pesticides that would damage your plants. And of course you don't want that when you're growing food. Okay, this was just delivered two days ago, but I had a tarp on it because we had some heavy rain. And take a look at it right here. It's really good stuff here. So this is really nice. It's rich mixed with mushroom compost, but it also drains really well. So it's perfect for raised beds. The local business we source our garden soil from works with Furman University to make this mixture of ready to plant in screen topsoil mixed with mushroom compost. The mushroom compost comes from an organic mushroom farm that uses it to grow their mushrooms. It contains a number of ingredients including wheat straw, peat moss, cottonseed meal and hulls, corn cobs, cocoa bean shells, gypsum, lime, 
and chicken litter. The materials are composted for weeks and then planted into a huge room where it's sterilized. After this, the mushroom farm uses this mixture to grow their mushrooms for 18 to 20 days. Then it's removed and shipped to be sold. When I don't have my own compost, I place a two to three inch layer of this mushroom compost on top of my raised beds and gently turn it under before I plant everything. If you happen to have an even deeper raised bed, you could add a layer of organic matter like compost that isn't quite finished, decomposing leaves, and also wood mulch are all examples. This is just filling space at the bottom of the bed versus filling it entirely with soil, which makes it less expensive and also builds your healthy soil over time. The other thing I mix into my raised bed soil is wool. I'm going to mix this whole bag into this raised bed. The wool pellets are not only fertilizer, but they hold 20 times their weight in water, so they help the soil hold on to moisture where roots need it and also improve drainage by wicking excess water away. I've also used these wool pellets in my grow bags, which usually need to be watered pretty frequently, and the wool pellets help reduce that. After an afternoon of hard work, this bed is full and ready to go. First layer cardboard, second layer decomposing wood topped with soil mixed with mushroom compost and the wool pellets. The wool pellets are going to be a slow release fertilizer throughout the whole entire growing season while helping the soil hold on to moisture and allowing the soil to, to drain well, which is important to prevent the soil from becoming anaerobic because then your plants can't thrive. So I think we're pretty good to go now. There is going to be some settling, of course. Um, it's going to rain in the next couple of days, so I'm going to wait till after that to plant so that I can see how everything settles. I might top this off with some more um, mixed soil and compost or compost before I plant. And other than that, I'm really excited about this bed. I've got the watering grid set up. I will show you this, how this works. I've got it set up right here on the back to the hose. I'm just going to turn it on here so I can show it to you. Check that out. I'm so excited about this. And I will probably set this up on a timer too, so that I don't even have to be out here to turn it off and on. But isn't this amazing? I'm so excited. After a couple of days of rain, I'm going to come out here and see how this settles and then I'm going to direct sow some seeds and I will show you in my next video what I'm going to be growing in this bed.